Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So today we are still in chapter 1, Reaction Kinetic, but we are currently in subtopic 1.2, Collision Theory and Transition State Theory. So if you haven't watched 1.1, please watch it now. In this video, we're going to learn about the Collision Theory, Activation Energy, Transition State Theory, and uh, Drawing Energy Profile Diagram of a Reaction. Alright, so without any further ado, let us start. So, collision theory is basically a theory that is used to explain the rate of chemical reaction. It is based on the idea that molecule must collide in order to react and the collision involved must be in an effective collision. And, as you will know, the rate of the reaction depending on the number of the effective collision divided by time. So, effective collision, if in Bahasa, it will call as the pelanggaran berkesan. So, uh, effective collision is basically a collision that is used uh, that can bring about to the formation of product. Yang mana pelanggan berkesan ni boleh membawa kepada keberhasilan uh, hasil. Alright? And there are few requirements for the effective collision. So, first, uh, the collision must at least possess a certain minimum amount of kinetic energy or known as the activation energy. So, uh, when they collide, when the atoms collide together, They must have the energy that is greater or equal to the activation energy. Then only it is called as a effective collision or pelanggaran berkesan. And second, they must collide in the right orientation. So the, the orientation of where the collision occurs must be in the correct orientation. Pada orientasi yang betul. Alright. So the activation energy are basically um, the energy that is needed. Um, by the uh, by the reactant particle in order to initiate chemical reaction in order to form product. And a reactant will pass through an activation barrier, as what you can see here, in order to form activated complex. And this activated complex will, now, will then drop in order to form product. The second part is the orientation. So orientation, orientation is very, very important because you know that uh, incorrect orientation will not forming a product. As what you can see here at the upper layer here, collisions uh, happens in the correct way. So, um, when it happens, a correct product can be formed. Where the green color particle will react with the green color particle. For example, hydrogen with hydrogen. But here, if the Orientation is not correct where the hydrogen, where the green particle um, colliding with the red particle, it basically will bounce back and no product will be formed. So this is known as the ineffective collision. Alright, so in order for the effective collision to occur, they need to uh, have a um, need to be able to overcome the activation energy and must collide in the correct orientation. So these two requirements need to be uh, fulfilled. Now we're going to focus on the transition state theory. So transition state theory basically focusing on this area. Usually at this point you already know about reactant and product. But transition state theory might be new to you. So basically it is a it is an idea where before the reactant going into product they have to go through a transition state first. And uh, this is when it has the highest potential energy here. Okay? So transition state is basically the configuration of atom of the collecting species at the time of collision. So we're going to look at this in the latest slide. And the species that it's formed um, at the transition state is known as the activated complex. Means that the reactant going to activated complex, activated complex going into product. Alright? It's just a very temporary, a very short time a very very small time that it was straight away going into product. So this is the characteristic of the activated complex where it is a very unstable because it will straight away drop to product and has a short half-life. As I mentioned, it's just like very a little one and then it goes away to product. And then the potential energy is greater than the reactant and product. And the activated complex is in equilibrium with the reactant. So yeah. 
reactant can go back into acrylic complex and acrylic complex can go down back into reactant. Same ways that it can decompose this back into reactant or it can be completed into product here. So here um, is the also the same representation. And as what you can see here, this one is the activated complex. Where, as what you can see here, the two reactants will move close enough together where this bond is almost be able to be formed. Seolah-olah, so, ikatan macam ter, hampir nak terhasil. And dekat sini, ikatan seolah-olah hampir nak terputus. As if the bond uh, started to break apart. And at the last stage, this form going to be uh, produced and this going to be break apart. Alright, so it's just like a moment of freeze where the activated complex, complex can be uh, seen here. Now, we look into the one of the process, which is exothermic process. So for the exothermic process, the energy of product is lesser than reactant. Okay. Meanwhile, for endothermic, it's going to be the other way around. Okay, as what you can see here, uh, exothermic process, you can see that the energy of the product is lower than the reactant. So, it's going to be giving a delta H, which is negative. Because product minus reactant, it will give, for example, this one 10, this one 100. So, it's going to be 10 minus 100, going to be negative 90 so it's going to be an exothermic reaction and this here up here is the activated complex where oc and during the activated complex they almost form a bond here and here then this bond almost break apart and at the last step they do break apart and here the bond is formed all right so i hope that you can see the analogy that is being shown here so that it is a much clearer picture. So here, in order to form product, and here, gonna form another product. But at the activator complex, they kinda join together. All right. And here is the activation and energy that needs to be overcome in order to form transition state. Uh, in order to form activator complex at the transition state. And this one is the activation energy for the reverse reaction. Means that for the product to go back into reactant, it has to overcome all the way up there to here. But then if for reaction, it just only need to overcome this area. All right. Now, um, example, we have to draw a potential energy diagram for an exothermic reaction. As mentioned, exothermic reaction going to have the product at the lower side, reactant at the higher side. So reactant higher, product lower, and then it needs to overcome the activation energy. So it's going to be something like this. And the distance between the um, endothermic and exothermic is going to be producing delta H negative. As what you have seen in the uh, chapter 6 of the first semester. Okay, exothermic reaction. So first, we're going to draw the potential energy as the y exists. X axis is going to be the progress of the reaction. So this one going to be our reactant. This one going to be our product. And here, going to be our activation energy. Okay, from the top till the, uh, on, uh, on the same level as the reactant. Because this is the activation energy or the energy barrier need to be overcome by the reactant in order to form the activated complex and convert it into product. And this is energy, uh, activation energy forward. And this one is the reverse activation energy. If the product need to go back into the reactant, it has to go all the way up there. All right. And meanwhile, for this side going to be the heat of the reaction, which is negative, as you can see here, because it is lower. All right. Now, uh, for the example number two, reaction A plus B going to C plus D has the enthalpy change of the forward reaction of plus 20 kJ per mole. So, plus here means it is an endothermic. 
reaction. So for endothermic, it's going to be reactant, going to be lower, product going to be higher. Okay. Here is the product. Right? So the activation energy for the forward reaction is 84 kilojoule per mole. Okay, so we're going to sketch and find the activation energy for the reverse direction. So as usual, potential energy, progress of reaction, and this is our reactant, which is A plus B, and this is our product C plus D. So this is our um, this is our uh, activation energy where it says that from the reactant to the top of the peak is 84 kJ per mole. So here is the delta H of the reaction where it gives you the forward reaction going to be plus 21 kJ per mole. So it asks us to calculate the activation energy for the reverse direction. So 84 minus 21, you will get the balance here. Lah. All right. So EA forward, 84 minus 21, you will get 63 kilojoule per mole. So the activation energy at the reverse direction is 63 kilojoule per mole. And do not that it is not drawn to scale. And that is why um, this appear to be larger than that one. Okay, but in reality, this one should be larger. Alright. Okay, I think that's all for uh, this subtopic. See you again in the next video. Okay, bye.